Hello, everybody. It is time for another live broadcast on Jupiter Lab and Python and SEO things. And when last we left off, I had installed Jupiter Lab as a standalone app, and you can see it right here. I'll add one more uh, blank notebook here just so that this isn't distracting yet. We will be talking about that in a moment. Oh, in fact, that's enough to cut down the distractions. No need for the new notebook. Uh, so I have Jupyter Lab installed here as sort of a standalone application. You can see uh, while it looks exactly like it does in the web browser, it has none of the browser Chrome browser Chrome. <laughs> it's funny that Chrome is named Chrome because the name for that kind of stuff is Chrome. So this has none of the browser Chrome. However, it is built on Chrome using Electron. It gets very confusing. However, it's standalone, and it's standalone in the same way that other things like, you know, VS Code is standalone this way using the Electron components. Uh, Atom was that way. Uh, Hyper.is, I think. Um, there was a terminal program that worked that way. Uh, more and more things that, mo that might have been Java Swing in the past are actually using uh, this approach here. And so I only have like 10 minutes till my work phone call begins, so I am going to jump right to it. I've been developing something for myself uh, called SEO Kata. In fact, this is just something I do uh, over the years in order to kind of recalibrate myself to um, the industry, the things I need to often do. Now, things are very different right now for a number of reasons. So, you know, why is, well, I'm always doing this. So use your powerful internalized assets in creative new ways. So that's really what I'm doing. This is not about anything new except for sort of the tools that release new potential. So we replace distractions with love worthy and righteous new things. Jupyter Labs suddenly becoming desktop based and not in the browser is one such thing. And the best way to learn is to teach, so always be teaching, hence me doing this broadcasting, even though <clears throat> I'm not really a YouTube per se, a YouTuber per se. Uh, I'm a nine to fiver, I'm a clock puncher. However, uh, I need to internalize this new information better, so I teach to you. And then figure out how to release already built up potential. You are almost never starting from scratch. You're releasing already there potential, which is exactly what you know Jupiter Lab did. You know, uh, I don't want to get on too many uh, subtopics here, but you know, uh, Python <laughs> releases a lot of potential uh, created by by C. There's a real uh, relationship between Python and C. And then um, IPython releases a lot of potential, ditto. And then uh, Jupyter, ditto. Jupyter is sitting on top of um, IPython. And then there's other things here, like you might even put the electron platform uh, but it's a different lineage uh, the electron chrome platform inherits from uh, google chrome and so on so you get the idea there's there's stacks of things here and uh, we're s each thing stands on the shoulders of giants and so uh, we've got this wonderful uh, jupiter environment except I'm up to these points where uh, the things I want to do, um, I can't really do because of those pip dependencies. So this video is really about uh, doing a lot of pip installs uh, on Jupyter Lab de desktop, right? So uh, I already did one yesterday. You'll see that in my SEO Kata. Uh, the purpose of this document, by the way, uh, this Jupyter Notebook both creates and uses the package called SEO Kata. Uh, running this function name 
uh, usually found at the bottom, uh, will re-export the package. That actually uh, exports the package so that it can be imported by other things, which is one of the things I'm really doing here where I'm importing everything from SEO Kata so that I don't need to use the packages um, notebook. Cells with the export uh, at the top uh, get exported. So here's my job list, which is just a bunch of my site names. But here is where all the imports of all the uh, global packages are that get used elsewhere. And you can see that cell I am actually exporting as well as a cell that comes not far beneath it that contains all the functions that basically constitute the package. They're the parts that use all those imports. And then the rest of it is extremely light expressiveness that builds, uh, well, that's what I'm describing here. Uh, cells with the, uh, become part of the package, non-exported cells demonstrate using the package and also are the tests, the package tests. Uh, other notebooks in this folder can then, from seocata.seocata, import asterisk, which is what I was showing you here with this line here. There's a number of other imports that just get used throughout. However, uh, I'll talk about those later. The idea is even to get these to a minimum, but to keep transparency. You don't want to have to do you know, uh, mystery uh, things. You actually want to know what's already, always there at your disposal. So there will be a few imports at the top of even uh, the variations that use this package. Uh, so this one repo, right, this repo name right now, which is SEO Kata, uh, can contain a multitude of permutated deliverables. So you build stuff out of this to give to people. Those are deliverables. And I used to have one deliverable per repo, but that got to be really nuts because there were so many deliverable types uh, that I had too many repos. I had repo propagation. So one of my goals has been to cut down repo propagation and to work everything out of a single directory or out of, yeah, out of a single directory, out of a single repo with a lot of different notebooks. So I'll start polluting this up with notebooks. I might make a directory called variations that imports from above and to the side, but for simplicity's sake, I'm just dumping my variation notebooks in the top level of the repo here. And so my real goal here is to attempt to do these imports and to just uh, pip install one after another. And when showing how to do this before, how to, when showing how to install Jupyter Lab desktop, I did pip install HTTPX. The, <laughs> latest one that's sort of the backbone of uh, my workflow these days. And I poked around to see where stuff was getting installed. And I did find this page uh, for the GitHub uh, Jupyter Lab uh, desktop project that tells about how to do this, customizing the bundled Python environment. So it does come pre-installed with a bunch of stuff that People who get Jupyter Lab normally through Anaconda are used to having at their disposal. So the Jupyter people make sure that the big, you know, producers, you know, pandas in particular, are pre-installed. However, that leaves you needing to pip install certain things. And so they're saying uh, there's the different instructions for platforms. Here's the Windows instructions. I did exclamation point pip install HTTPX. Now that's probably because of my old um, VI and Vim ha habits. The exclamation is, you know, uh, the shorthand notation for run this. Except um, Jupyter Lab has these percent sign magic. So we're just going to start pip installing a bunch of stuff right in a cell. That's how it says to do it. Open a notebook and run the command below in a cell. So they know that they have those path problems because you can't access pip from where you, I think you should be able to, right? So one of the things that is very typically done is opening a terminal and then trying to use the pip program from there, but Jupyter doesn't have all the path stuff worked out, so uh, that ain't gonna work. So, and these variations is just a distraction now, so I'm going to close that. We don't really need to look at it. And I just try and do these imports, and it's going to generate errors. So 
no module named OAuth. So I'm going to keep track of dependencies as I go. I'm going to make this a um, markdown. And we'll do all the installs. OAuth is my own thing for OAuth authentication, but you can see it's going in order of this waterfall. So let's, uh, you know, I actually want two cells, one to do the dependency from and one to keep track of what I did. So pip, I have it in my copy buffer, pip install OHAWF, that's OAuth2 authentication. And there's going to probably be sub dependency so this may go and install a whole lot of stuff and if it gets stuck at the asterisk there's a pitfall in doing pip install from cells which is when it it prompts you for information when it gives it a yes no question uh, it sometimes gets stuck but it would get stuck at the asterisk it came back with a three so you can see it actually installed quite a bit of stuff the sub dependencies that are required for certificates and I think open SSH and a bunch of other little things, the Google authentication libraries, but we'll keep track of what we pip installed here. And then we just keep redoing this. Now I know there's ways with pip freeze and everything that you, um, you don't have to um, attempt to rerun it, but uh, I'm going to uh, just to run into each dependency and to back off and to do it again. It should actually not throw an error on OAuth now. Version conflict. Oh, interesting. Version conflict. Pi parsing, JupyterLab resources. This is a surprise. I did not think I was going to see this. But this is also an interesting path that I want to stay aware of. It's kind of like what I was looking for yesterday. And... Um, that through the error on trying to do that import so for right now I'm just gonna edit that out and I'll come back to it and see what the next import TLD extract so pip install TLD extract I'm doing that wrong we actually want to do the install here and then I put that there and you see it comes back with a number, so it's done doing. And so long as we don't have those strange uh, version um, things, it, this should be a, a fairly smooth process where I pip install whatever it tells me about. And in fact, in order to make this easier, you can pip install multiple things. So instead of a copy and paste job, I'll be able to paste into both locations. I think it's, no, it's not with a common pip install multiple. Let's check that. Pip install multiple. We'll get that syntax so I'm making sure I'm doing it correctly. Pip install. Yeah, that's the question. And it's, yeah, pip in spaces like that. So we're doing exactly the right thing. So each time I have one of these, I did a, I don't think I actually installed the natural language toolkit yet. So we'll get that one. I have three minutes till my call so you know this will give you the idea of what I'm doing I probably won't go through every one now because uh, it'll take longer than the three minutes but you can see each one of these dependencies now we can actually do the install and put it here so that I can provide a one-line install that basically does all the pip installs when people want to use my stuff and they're like oh I'm missing dependencies they'll be able to just do this uh, one command which will uh, which will do all the installs I have it as markdown so it can't be accidentally run when I do that I'm actually running the cell above that's an ugly one that's another uh, version conflict I'm gonna need to look into that but that's coming uh, from one of the libraries one of the packages that I had done recently uh, da, 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 da. Uh, from API client discovery yeah there's some incompatibilities on the OAuth stuff I'm gonna have to uh, track down um, API client from random underneath from random 
Oh, so it got all the way down to here. That's pretty good, right? There's a compatibility thing I'll need to resolve there. Uh, BS4, beautiful soup. So there's some questions there. We really want to uh, look at uh, pip install BS4 to see what the real way to do it is because there's different ways out there. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. This is not saying it's... Uh, oh yeah, this is a dummy package, see? It's a dummy package. Uh, the official name of the package is Beautiful Soup, so we put that one. And this is really how you want to pip install it, even though it always gets imported as BS4, so you don't have to type out that really long thing. So, whoops, that was a double pip install. Hey, I think it might have worked. It's going to try and... Uh, yeah, that's pretty funny. Okay. Beautiful soup. Hey, nice. We're up to SQL uh, light dict. See, it's not really that many dependencies in my SEO kata, such as it were. It's going to be uh, fairly easy to get these environments set up. Uh, I will shortly be adding... Um, full-blown Chrome screen script. And that's all the imports. That's all the imports that are necessary uh, to do this. So I guess I stop there. I'm going to join my call. And I'll pick up at this point with you folks later because this is, this is big. This changes my workflow. It's still the same muscle memory. It's still the same basic stuff. But it's just a little bit of changing of workflow to be better keeping jobs separate on different screens, keeping jobs separate on different notebooks and such for, uh, you know, doing SEO in Python. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again soon, and don't forget to subscribe.